Welcome back to Miami, Florida for continuing coverage of the Rolex Miami OCR. It's cold across most of the USA, but not here. It's day three of this Olympic classes event. I'm Gary Jobson. The U.S. Sailing Center is one of four facilities like this across America for training in important regattas like this. The top Olympic contenders from 53 countries are all here. In the Paralympic Sonar class, Great Britain's John Robertson leads America's Albert Foster after two days of racing. There are three crew in these nifty keelboats. Over on the 49er course, there was a lot of excitement today. At times, these gifts could be a handful and tested the limits of the sailors and their boats. Great Britain's John Pink and Rick Peacock lead. Eric Stork and Trevor Moore had a three and a second today, but were over early in the third race, jumping the gun and getting disqualified as a result. They now stand sixth. The top 10 boats in this class will compete in the medal race on Saturday. In the laser class, Britain's Nick Thompson was second in the world's last year and third two years ago. He had a great race today. I've been competing since about the age of four um, in different classes. So I came through in cadets and optimists and uh, laser radials. And uh, yes, yeah, so it's, it's all I know really. So you've certainly got a long career ahead of you. Yeah, I hope so. I certainly hope so. You know, I think, um, I think the Olympic sailing is fantastic. I'm absolutely loving it, but um, you know, I certainly hope there's, a, there's more in the future. Uh, for me in sailing. American Clay Johnson finished third in the trials for the 2008 Games and graduated from Harvard. He's sailing well this week and relishes the one design aspect of the laser. After the race, he explained his thinking and tactics around the race course. I was on port tack and uh, there was a Julio Alsogaray from Argentina on starboard and kind of look at each other underneath when it's gonna, underneath the boom when it's going to be a close cross and I kind of get, you know, asked can I go and he gave me a little finger saying go, go across and then ducked me. Um, you know, like you said before, it's all tactics. If he wants me to cross and, you know, he's going to let me cross. The other alternative is I put a close lee bow on him, in which case he might have to tack away and go right or something else. Okay, so we're looking at you going downwind here. There's a fine line between rocking too much or too little. Uh, how, do, how, how hard do you push? It depends on the situation a lot. I, I think when you're in a one-on-one -on -one battle or just trying to get in front of a, a group of boats, people tend to push it a little harder. Um, I think you just need to be really careful to, when you rock your boat, you have to turn your boat and you have to use that. A lot of people get yellow flagged for just rocking without any turning, of course. Paige Raley is one of America's best single-handed sailors. She's a former world champion and has won all over the world, yet she understands that you need to keep improving. Out on the race course, Paige Raley had a second in race one. In race two, she rounded the top mark in 15th out of 58 boats. Then she turned on the afterburners, passing 10 boats before finishing fifth. When you get to a certain level, everyone becomes the same speed, so it really comes down to who's the smartest. So the first race, it was the left side I played up, and the second race I played up the right, and I just got in the better win, and I used my tactics to have an advantage over everyone else. After six races, Paige Raley is in third place, only six points out of first. There are four races to go, and then on Saturday, the medal race. Tomorrow, we'll feature Paige Raley's brother, Zach, who won an Olympic silver medal in 2008. He has his hands full battling two British sailors. We'll see how he does tomorrow. We'll also take a look at the 470 men's and women's division. From Miami, I'm Gary Jobson. Thanks for being with us.